Hey folks, did you know that there are different types of smart objects in Photoshop and that smart objects can be linked or unlinked? Well, they can, and that's what I'm gonna talk about in this video. I'm also gonna correct a mistake that I made in my Sean's Favorite Photoshop Techniques video course. I know it's hard to believe I made a mistake, but it happened. Okay, let's start with the two different types of smart objects that you can work with in Photoshop. For the first type, I'm going to edit this image in Photoshop just by editing it in Photoshop, uh, opening it from Lightroom. And this is going to open up the image in Photoshop as a TIFF file. And it's currently not a smart object, but if I want to convert it to a smart object so that I can place smart filters on it, then I can do that by uh, right-clicking and saying convert to smart object or I can also use the smart object button right here in the TK actions panel and you know when a layer is a smart object because it has this little icon down here in the corner of the thumbnail now any filter that I place on this smart object becomes a smart filter so for example if I wanted to put just to pick one a, a blur filter on this layer. Uh, that's a lot of blur, but it doesn't matter because this isn't the point. I'll go ahead and place that blur there. So you can see I've got this Gaussian Blur Smart Filter, and I can double click here to reopen the filter and make further adjustments to it if I want. But if I double click on the smart object itself, it just opens a new copy, actually a PSB copy, of that smart object layer as a separate image document. And that's all it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that and go back to my original document here. And now let's go back to Lightroom. And this time I'm gonna open the same image. I'm gonna edit in, but instead of just editing in Photoshop, I'm gonna open it as a smart object in Photoshop. So here it is, and it already is a smart object. But this is the second kind of smart object. This smart object is different than the previous smart object I made because since I opened it as a smart object from Lightroom, this smart object is connected back to the original RAW file. So I could still place filters on this layer and they would be smart filters, but the new added benefit I have with this type of smart object is that when I double click on it, instead of just opening that smart layer as its own document in Photoshop, it actually opens the raw image data in Camera Raw. And here I can see all of my original raw image adjustments that I made in Lightroom. And they're here and I can adjust them. And this is actually going back and working with the original raw information. You can't do that with the type of smart object that you create once you're already in Photoshop. Now it's true that I could use a camera raw filter by going either to the filter menu and choosing camera raw filter or clicking the ACR button right here in the TK Actions panel. And that adds a camera raw filter that opens up that smart object in camera raw, but this is not the original raw data. This is using camera raw to adjust that TIFF file document. And you can see I don't have any of my original RAW file settings here, and I can make adjustments, but I'm not gonna have the same latitude with these adjustments that I would have with the original RAW adjustments. So, to recap on that, the two types of smart objects are the ones that you create in Photoshop after you've already opened the image as a TIFF file, and there's the ones that you open from Lightroom or Camera Raw as a smart object, and those are the ones that are linked back to the original RAW file and allow you to get back to those original RAW adjustments. Now let's talk about linked smart object copies and unlinked smart object copies. Sometimes you want to copy a smart object for various purposes. If I use the duplicate layer button here in the TK Actions panel, that makes a copy of the smart object that I originally had but this copy is an unlinked copy, and I'll explain what that means in a minute. If you wanted to make a copy of the smart object like that using the Photoshop menus, 
you'd go up to layer. And this is where I made my mistake in my Sean's favorite Photoshop techniques video course. I said that you would use the duplicate layer command, which does make a copy, but it's a linked copy, not an unlinked copy. And I'll again, explain what that means in a minute, but to make an unlinked smart object copy, the same way that the TK actions panel does, you need to come down to smart objects, new smart object via copy. And that will do the same thing the panel does. Now, what is the difference? Well, the difference is, is that these two unlinked smart objects have completely separate raw adjustment controls. So if I double click the top one, I can come in and change things about those adjustments that I made. For example, maybe the exposure, maybe the contrast, maybe the shadows, maybe the white balance, whatever I wanted to change. I could change anything about that raw interpretation. And when I say OK, now those changes are updated in this copy, but notice they didn't get updated in the other copy because those two are not linked to each other. And that means that I can open up this bottom copy and make completely separate adjustments to that. And these are raw, these are just two different interpretations of the raw information. And that enables me to do a completely different interpretation of that image. And then if I wanted to, I could add a mask to that top layer. For example, this is one uh, application of this. I could add a mask to that top layer and then separately mask those two uh, versions of the raw data into one image. That doesn't look good, but that just shows you what you can do. And once I've masked those together, if I wanted to further work with those raw adjustments to get them to match even better or get the look that I wanted, I could do that. It's important to note that when I'm making adjustments to the, the raw information here in these smart objects, that's not changing my original raw adjustments that I made back in Lightroom. Those adjustments are still there. When I go to Lightroom, will be unchanged. These are only being changed in the smart object layers themselves. Okay, now let's see what a linked smart object is. So to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this top smart object layer. And this time I am going to duplicate it using the method I said in my video, which is to go to layer, duplicate layer. And it asks you what you wanna call it and you say, okay. And now if you look here, this looks the same as the other one. They're two smart objects, they're copies of each other. But what the difference is, is that now, if I open up this one and make an adjustment, let's say to the exposure and click OK, that exposure adjustment happens the same to both because the two of them are linked. So there are some situations when you may want to have your smart object raw adjustments linked like that. And there may be other times when you do not want to have them linked. And knowing those two different methods of creating smart object copies allows you to do it either way. So quick recap, to create unlinked smart object copies, you can use the duplicate layer button in the TK Actions panel, or you would go to layer, smart objects, new smart object via copy. And to create linked smart objects, you would go to layer, duplicate layer. All right, there you go. The different types of smart objects in Photoshop, linked versus unlinked smart object copies, and the correction to the mistake that I made in my Sean's Favorite Photoshop Techniques video. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next one.